It's all fun and games patching up 15 different services and calling it a SaaS. But what happens when you have to build an enterprise software? What happens when you have to build software for a big company? I don't know about you, but I've had the privilege of building software for big companies. I love experimenting with new tools, new SDKs all the time. But when you're building software for companies, you have to take a different approach. You have to use a tech stack that's battle tested, proven, and compliant, a word most of you never use when deciding what tech stack to use. So I'm going to show you what tech stack I use for enterprise software, how to set it up, how I use it, how it works, and hopefully you build some quality software for some businesses. Let's get into it. So the tech stack for enterprise software. First things first, Next.js, this thing never leaves me alone. Listen, Next.js has won. Everybody uses it. A lot of companies are adapting it. Unless the company is Boomer and it's an old company, they're most likely using some form of React or Next.js, and Next.js is my go-to. Servant and client rendering, API routes, built for security and scalability, and listen, the ecosystem is rich. So Next.js is our framework of choice. Next up is Convex, and the reason why we're going with Convex is Convex gives us real-time sync end-to-end -end type safety scalability and here is the compliance word it is SOC 2 compliant it is HIPAA compliant now I don't know the details of these compliances but what I do know is that companies especially the bigger ones you got to get your compliance especially SOC 2 in order your software not SOC 2 you're getting socked and not getting the check unfortunately that's the case convex is not only SOC 2 compliant but it's also the best backend to build very fluid fast and seamless applications and third for our authentication, we're going to use WorkOS. Now, this is the first time I've mentioned WorkOS in this YouTube channel. And the reason being is WorkOS is literally for enterprise software. Cursor uses WorkOS, OpenAI uses WorkOS. And the reason why WorkOS is important is because all the compliance jargon you can think of, SSO, S SOC 2, GDPR, GDP, ADP, whatever these <laughs> terms are called. Again, I don't know the, the definitions and the technicalities. I just use tools that meet these criteria. And WorkOS, if you're building an application for businesses enterprise is the auth layer you need i know there are tons of awesome auth providers there but no one does enterprise better than work os when we combine the three next.js with lightning fast ui and scalability convex powerful reactive and minimal overhead and then work os for all the enterprise auth that you can think of and dream of ladies and gents we have an awesome tech stack for business and enterprise now before i show you how to set this up there are some of you who are probably going to tell me hey i'm not a developer i don't write code how would i build internal tools for my company or software for businesses right a lot of the vibe code tools don't really take you there or help you there that that's why I want to share with you Retool, the sponsor of today's video. Retool is amazing if you are a non-technical person or you're a technical person and you don't want to write any code to build software that businesses can use. For example, let's say I wanted to build a website. I can use their templates, right? For example, here, a Firebase admin panel or a promo code manager, right? These are tools businesses, especially internal tools biz businesses would build. And literally you can click on create app from template and you can build on top of their existing templates for apps. Let's say you wanted to store data, right? Let's say you need a database or storage, like to store your images or files, or you need to send emails, or you need to set up an AI application. Literally in just a few clicks, Retool has all these resources ready for you. So let's say I wanted to build an AI chat app, but I don't want to manage my open AI key api key my anthropic key deep sea key retool takes care of that for me i want a database right and what's cool about their database is i can create a new table and import from a csv file so let's say you have a google sheet or whatever you can literally in one click import from a csv file and have a database running on retool connect that to the app you've just built you basically have software that any business would use let's say you want to set up workflows right a pretty complex workflow i can think of is getting a slack message every time there's a query match in your database right so i can click use this template and then what retool is going to do is it's going to spin up a whole workflow and i can use this environment and connect these nodes and spin up a workflow and last but not least agents say you want to build an agent for a company you can start off with their templates or build an agent from scratch let's say you wanted to build a sales lead responder i would just build click on that template and i can literally build an agent off their template connected with whatever resources deploy it and use it and if you want to make a little extra change sell this to businesses or use this in your own business in my opinion this is the best alternative if you are not a developer or you're not looking to write code use retool the link is in the description now let's get back to setting up our enterprise tech stack the best way to set the stack up is going on terminal and typing in npm create convex at latest you're going to hit enter 
and then I'm just going to name this my app. We're going to use Next.js app router. We're going to use AuthKit by WorkOS. The reason why we're going to use this convex command is because it's going to provision the WorkOS account for you. So I'm going to hit enter. It's spinning up everything. I'm getting curse rules added. So if I'm going to use AI to build this project, it's going to work flawlessly. All right, our project is set up. And all I'm going to do is npm install, and then I'm going to run npm run dev. I'm going to create a new convex project. I'm just going to call it check. We're going to do a cloud deployment. And if you haven't set up WorkOS before, it will confirm with you the email that you want to use. It'll use the same email as your convex email. I've done this plenty of times. This is why it's not asking me, but now our project is running. If we go to localhost 3000, I should see my app here. So I have convex, Next.js and WorkOS set up. If I click sign up, I could see I can sign up here. Let me sign up with my Google account. I'm going to sign up with my personal email and I am signed up. And this is a mini demo of Convex. You can click add a random number and you can see how instantly it updates. And what's cool about Convex is it's real time and reactive by nature. What do I mean by that? So what I mean by that is I want you to look at the numbers here. I'm going to in a new tab, click add number. And you see both pages are in sync. You get this by default. Building this from scratch or using any other backend as a service is difficult, but with Convex, it's right out the box. I want to give you a rundown of the backend code and why I think the marriage between Next.js and Convex is a perfect combo for building applications. Now, under the Convex folder, I want you to notice everything that's my backend is under this Convex folder. Everything is code. And in Convex, there are three main primitives I want you to think about. Queries, mutations, and actions. And basically how this all works is you can think of your client as Next.js, right? Your, the Next.js app calls a server function and there are three server functions. There's queries, mutations, or actions. The queries and mutations interact with the database. What do I mean? The query reads data from the database, mutation writes data to the database, and the action allows me to send or fetch data to a third party API. So if I want to do any fetching, calling, whatever it is regarding any third party API, I'm going to use an action. And the reason why this is awesome is this creates a boundary between my client and my database, right? With Convex, I'm not allowed to directly call or read or write data from the database without first writing a server function and that server function working with the database. So when we think about queries, I just explained to you queries read data, right? So if we look at this example query, we have an arguments that we pass and this is basically a validator, right? So I'm going to get a count, which is a type number and the handler. This is basically the implementation in this case, a query implementation. Basically, what we're going to do in the handler is we're going to query the numbers table in the order of creation time, right? A descending order so we can get the most recent one. We basically want to get the total count. We're going to return the numbers. We're going to map over them and reverse them, all that good stuff. But we're also going to return the identity of the viewer. And the reason why we have access to the identity of the user is because of the tight integration Convex has with WorkOS, right? So you get all of this out of, out of the box. This is how easy it is to read data from your database. And to call this on the front end, it's as simple as importing use query, which you get from the Convex slash React package. And what's awesome about convex is its type safety and i'm going to show you how so i'm going to type api and then when i click dot you're going to see i get this type definition my functions and i click dot i can add number list numbers i'm going to do list numbers because i want to get the total numbers and then i have to pass the count if you remember and again all of this is type safe now you might be wondering where did i get api dot my functions dot list number from if i go under my convex folder i api gets me in here and then dot my functions gets me the my functions file and then dot list numbers allows me to call this query that's why if you see the add number use mutation use mutations like use query i can call the mutation i can call the server function on my client and if i look at api dot my functions dot add numbers you can see how i can get all the type definitions if i scroll down and look at the mutation look what it's called add numbers Right. So I have this amazing developer experience on top of compliance. So as a developer, I can ship and move fast. But also from a business perspective, I have all the compliance stuff taken care of. 
And ladies and gentlemen, that is why I would use these three tools to build software for businesses or enterprise clients. I'm moving fast. I'm building great software and all the tools are compliant. I know as web developers, we have that itch to try every new software, but when you're building for businesses, you got to use the tools that work and that are compliant. And these are the tools. I hope you enjoy this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let me know what you want to see on this channel. I'm uploading consistently. So would love your feedback, would love your support, would love your love. I appreciate you. I thank you. I pray for you all. Have an amazing day, week, night, whatever it is. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.